What's up, board game people? Projects are launching early this week, but don't worry, I'm on top of it. Today, Kingdom Come Deliverance is launched on GameFound and is already funded. This is an interesting one that will likely be very polarizing. Let's take a closer look. I don't get any money for making my videos from game creators. I make them to help us make educated choices when backing games. If I get something wrong or you disagree with anything, let's chat in the comments. It's 1421. Two dreadful years into the Hussite Wars. The Catholics and the Hussites are fighting against one another. This conflict is turning brother on brother, son against father, setting town against town. The Catholic bishop has chosen you as his pawn, and he sent you to help destabilize pro-Hussite Prague. You're here to find Wolf of Wolfsburg, servant of the bishop. Wolf has been compiling valuable information for the so-called role of traitors. It's a list of Catholics who've been covertly supporting the Hussite cause, but Wolf has gone silent. Kingdom Come Deliverance is a cooperative living RPG for 1-4 to four players based on a world-famous video game. You and your party will set out on an adventure like no other, through a captivating story set in 15th century Bohemia. The game is app-driven, bringing captivating story to you with lifelike voice acting and soundscapes. Discover a socially immersive experience. The narrative is deep, gritty, with branching paths. Every character has will and their own motivations. The world is living and will remember your choices. You'll explore real-world locations and meet historically documented characters. This isn't a fantasy game. No elves, zombies, or dragons here. Only cold steel, famine, and blood. The story unfolds over a five-scenario, 20-ish hour campaign that's fully voiced and narrated. The campaign offers multiple endings based off decisions you make, and the app and narration is localized in many different languages. They're also revealing more scenarios that offer one-off experiences in the game world. The miniatures here are historical scale, which is 54mm to the eyes of most models. These miniatures will stand tall above the map, offering a great deal of detail and should really help bring the game's art style full circle. So now that we know a bit of what Kingdom Come Deliverance is, Let's take a look at those pledge levels. So far, the pledge levels are pretty easy. You either want standees or you want miniatures. For 130 euros, you get the Squire Pledge that includes the World Box, the Stretch Goals Box, and the Roll of Traders campaign. For 180 euros, you get the Knights Pledge that includes the World Box, the Stretch Goals Box, and the Roll of Traders campaign, and the Miniatures Box. Both pledges should get anything revealed in the Daily Rewards. Add-ons are pretty simple as well. There's one. An additional playable character, the Merchant Silva, for 8 euros. If you followed the campaign prior to launch, you're already getting Silva for free. The campaign has stretch goals in the form of daily reveals. These reveals are happening on day 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and 16. The first reveal was a new standalone 4-hour scenario called Escaping Perkstein. Shipping is a bit of a mixed bag. There's a small chart showing shipping estimates on the page. The breakdown of shipping regions may ruffle a few feathers, but there isn't too much difference between the top and the middle regions, but every little bit makes it more expensive. The good thing here is that VAT is included for most areas that would require it. Tax is also included in most areas. Shipping will be paid via the pledge manager just prior to final deliveries. This project is also the first I've seen with the new stable pledge guarantee. If the final shipping cost raised more than 10%, you have two weeks to request a full refund. This is great to see and a wise choice by the creators to include it. So, what are my thoughts on the game and the campaign? This is a tough one. It really is. I expect this project to be a bit polarizing for the majority of board gamers. First is the price. The game is up there. I'm not going to lie. It's a steep ask for $130 for four miniatures, a bunch of cardboard, some plastic tokens, and cards. The campaign that it's all coupled with is only 20 hours in length. So yeah, I admit up front that the price is steep. They've tried to offset the steep price with some quality components, but in the end, some of that cost is still going to creating and maintaining the dreaded application. When you couple the price with the required application, I know it's going to drive some people away. I think you can say just about anything you want about what an application will do or add to a game, and there are those that just are plain out. I get it, but if you're someone who might be able to tolerate an app, I think this one is worth taking a chance on. 
The application is the heart and soul of the game. They describe it as an invisible app. They're trying to keep the focus on the table and not your phones. But at the end of the day, the entire game is app-driven. The beauty here is they're attempting to drive app-driven board gameplay to the next level. All the NPCs are voiced. The narration is voiced. And they're all voiced by different actors. This is something you don't see often in audiobooks or audio drama podcasts even. But here they're making it a reality. They're also backing up the voice acting with some realistic soundscapes that should draw you right in. The app is more than just voices coming from a box, though. Here, it gives the NPCs a will of their own. A little bit of AI that cards and cardboards just can't do. It allows them to become suspicious or trusting of you. It tracks your choices, sending you down widely different paths, and even to different endings and outcomes for a scenario or the entire campaign. Yes, it's an app, but if they handle it right, maybe this will finally justify the app's place at the board game table. They're referring to the world box and the application as a platform in many places. They hint at the possibility of more content to come, and if done right, their platform will allow them to continue to expand the game even after it's been delivered to your door. What I hope to see is several more scenarios or even another campaign added to the core purchase here through the daily reveals. If they can up this from their current 24 hours to 36 or 48 hours, the price will be harder to argue with. They seem to hint at DLC scenarios or campaigns that they could add in and will use existing components to create a whole new adventure. It also allows them to cheaply expand the core box by offering expansions with just a few components, such as new item cards, map tiles, or characters. Then you just download the new campaign and play. This is an idea I can get behind. Here, the miniature box is actually a really great deal. You're getting 50 miniatures for around $50, and these miniatures aren't your normal board game 32mm minis. These are historical scale minis at 54mm. The sculpts and the details stay true to the art style perfectly. The miniatures each tell a story, and they're full of character. The art across the entire game stays true to the video game and true to itself. I love the map tile art. It's all hand-drawn, but it avoids being cartoony and conveys the dark, gritty atmosphere that 15th century Bohemia really had. I know there are many who will look at the item cards, the player boards, and many of the extraneous components and see them as drab and dreary. You'd be totally right. These are, shall we call them, UI pieces, and they mirror the UI of the game perfectly. They're simple with reason. They're simple as to not detract from what's happening in the story. The art style may be a turnoff for some, but I guarantee you'll be looking at those minis in the map much more than you'll be concentrating on the periphery. Another thing I noticed going through the campaign is that they're offering quality components up front. They didn't put plastic silkscreen tokens behind a paywall. They didn't leave a linen finish for the rulebook to be some stretch goal. The double-layered player boards weren't a daily reveal. They've presented quality components from the start, and they look fantastic. The tokens are crisply printed, the custom dice easily readable, even the cardboard components seem nice and thick. One of the components I question are the plastic rings for the miniatures. These have several downsides. They scratch any painted rims that you leave on the miniature. They're taken on and off quite a lot. They can be a pain to get on and off sometimes, too. And sometimes they're prone to breaking. I'd rather see them have a small indicator token that could be slotted into a base. I also wish we could see the final materials and design for the storage system. As designed, it looks like it'll come in and out of the box nicely and make setup a flash. Place the trays around the map and go. It even is going to fit sleeved cards. It's great that they took that into consideration. Hopefully the trays are out of a thick, sturdy plastic. They've been putting out a series of videos titled Going Medieval, explaining different systems and aspects of the game. The campaign page gave a very high-level overview of the basic systems, but more should be shown on the page from the beginning. Lots of people don't want to click on videos, or they don't want to watch a whole video to understand a game. Don't hide your mechanics, put them up front and center. I look forward to seeing the combat episode of Going Medieval tomorrow. While combat's not the focus of the game, they'll need to have nailed combat and difficulty to really seal the deal for me. The video game was unapologetically difficult at some times, and I'm hoping to see that the game doesn't hold your hand too often. That being said, if you want to learn more, you're left with those videos or a nice spread of previews from alternate sources. 
it's nice to see some non-highly monetized creators amongst the bunch. I looked and I looked, and my tired eyes just couldn't find a link to the rulebook. It'd be nice to have the option to take a peek at that before the end of the campaign. So let's wrap this all up with a bow. For me, the game looks amazing. I think they managed to stay true to the video game, and I can only hope their story can convey the emotional and hard choices that are necessary to survive 15th century Bohemia. I think for someone who's not played the video game, or may not know anything about the historical period, this might be a hard sell at its core price. They're marketing a platform, and part of that core price is going to production and app development. Platforms are hard to sell until proven. Now, if you give them that chance, I believe they can bring this game to life. I think the platform, if properly supported in the future, may be worth the cost. I think that leaves you with two major gambles here. First is app development. Many creators set out to make an application only to find it's much harder than they think. Here, they seem to have a decent start in Unity, and if they build on that and do the necessary testing and iteration, they should do okay. The other gamble is on the platform they are creating. If they continue supporting it, it should be more than worth it. If they put out a scenario too and abandon it, maybe not so much then. In the end, you need to examine this and see if it's something that you'll play for a full campaign, and possibly even replay to find the different routes through the story. If that's a yes, then this should be a safe back for you. If you're on the fence, wait and see what they reveal throughout the campaign. And if you can't get over the necessity of an app, this really won't be a good experience for you. Wow, it's an awesome start to a very busy week. We still have several more projects incoming and I'll be covering as much as I can along the way. Please make sure you subscribe so you don't miss anything and help our little channel grow. Also, if you want to talk board games, feel free to hop in our Discord server and say hello. Thanks to everyone watching and commenting. Be safe, stay cool, and play something difficult tonight.